let's look at transpiration. Transpiration is a very important property that's demonstrated by plants, and we're talking about water primarily. So uh, we're actually talking about the loss of water vapor from the leaves and stems of plants. And there's something called transpiration pole, and we're going to go through this. But basically, you should know that when you water plants, what I used to do as a kid when I was forced to go outside and water the plants was I would try to just spray the water directly onto the leaves, hoping that that would actually work. But what I didn't realize was I was actually clogging up the pores of the stomata when really a plant can only take up water through its roots. So the movement of water, it goes up through this way. So I really should have just been uh, watering the soil around it. And oftentimes to try to save time, I would probably put a little bit too much water into the soil and that actually ends up uh, causing lack of oxygen for, to reach the actual roots and so you actually end up killing these cells down here and then the water doesn't even get taken up so you end up killing the plant so that's no good so think about that next time you water a plant so transpiration in plants can be affected by many different factors and here are four of them light temperature humidity and wind and so what, what you should try to do right now is uh, pause the video and then try to figure out try to guess how each one of these factors actually affects transpiration. If I increase light intensity, is that going to increase the rate of water moving through the plant or slow it down? Same thing with each one of these. So pause the video and then try to figure that out. Just give it a guess. It's a good, good practice to do that before you go through anything. So let's look at what happens if each one of these factors is actually increased. So if we increase the light intensity, actually that increases the rate of transpiration. Light is necessary for the a stomata to stay open in the darkness the guard cells this this is true for normal plants in the darkness guard cells will close and the water will actually stay in now there are some exceptions and we're going to see that a little bit later when we're talking about um, plants like desert plants for example we're going to see a difference there if i increase the temperature well transpiration goes up this one's a little more easy to understand the temperature basically causes more energy to be present in particles and that actually increases the rate of evaporation so if there's more temperature the particles are going to escape a little faster and so you end up with uh, an increase in the rate of transpiration increase of the rate of diffusion okay humidity actually has an opposite effect if i increase the humidity in other words if the air around the plant has a uh, lot of water in it, so it's very humid, close to, let's say, 90% 90, 90 or something like that, it ends up reducing the rate of transpiration. And this is because of a difference in concentration gradient. If it's really dry, if it's really dry around the plant, in other words, low humidity, then there is more space, you could say, for the water particles to diffuse from an area of high concentration or high saturation to an area of low saturation. If the levels are balanced outside the plant and inside the spaces of the plant, for example, in the stomata where it's very, very humid in the stomata, well, then there's not going to be such a concentration gradient and then so you don't end up losing as much water. So transpiration therefore decreases. Wind is actually going to speed up the rate at which transpiration happens. So if you have more wind, um, the explanation requires a little bit more detail. I've mentioned previously that inside the stomata, inside the stomata you have pretty close to pure saturated air. So inside the plant, inside the stomata, it's very, very humid. Right outside, it will also be pretty humid because there will just be some water like hanging around, pockets of saturated air hanging around there. If it's really windy, then the wind is going to kind of blow away or move away that saturated air. And then so it's kind of creating a, a, a sharp concentration gradient. And so that's going to speed up the rate at which the water can actually escape. So more wind means more transpiration can actually happen. The transpiration stream outlining everything, basically we're talking about water moving from the roots all the way up through the stem into the leaves and then evaporating out primarily through the stomata. Um, here's how it pretty much works and how it's usually happening. Heat provides energy for the evaporation of water. We talked about that. More heat energy particles are going to increase in their energy and they're going to actually escape a little bit faster. When that water escapes, because of transpiration pull or the cohesion, the cohesive bonds between the water molecules. So as water molecules leave, these water molecules get pulled up. It's the same way uh, a straw works, basically. So this, I don't know what this guy is, but when he's sucking up water, when he's sucking up the drink, the pressure, the change in pressure, and also the this 
the connection of between all the particles, the liquid particles, due to cohesion or hydrogen bonds, it's going to be pulled up there. So they get replaced. So as water mo molecules leave, they get replaced by water molecules that are in the xylem. So it's going to get pulled up. It's called capillary action, and then it gets actually pulled up, and it's hydrogen bonds we talked about. Low pressure is created, and so this is the pull, the transpiration pull, and this suction extends all the way down into the roots as well too, and then we're going to end up pulling all the, all the water up through. So it's a constant chain. As these water molecules evaporate, water is continually going to be moving up as long as there is water in the soil that is around that can move in through the large surface area of the root hair. So again, we mentioned that's called cohesion, and then it's due to hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. The stomata are controlled by a hormone called abscisic acid, and we saw another hormone that was present. We're going to see a few hormones. Another one was called auxin, and that controlled plant growth. We saw that in a previous video. In this case here, Abscisic acid is playing a big role. Abscisic acid causes the guard cells to close the stomata, and plants produce this when they are stressed from water storage. So if the stomata close, that's going to reduce the rate of water loss or reduce the rate of transpiration. And if there's water shortage, then the plant wants to minimize its water loss as much as possible. That's probably another reason why the stomata are on the bottom of the leaves as opposed to the top of the leaves. If they were at the top of the leaves, you'd probably see transpiration rate much higher than, than normal. And a plant has to do what it can, do what it can to conserve the actual water that's present in there. Some special adaptations. Here we have a cactus. In general, we call these things zero fights. And I like to think of zero as zero water or not a lot of water available. So any kind of plants that are present in the desert or in places where there's not a lot of water are going to have some special adaptations. So when you think of a cactus, you think of its, its weird, long, really thick stems, its spikes instead of leaves, and then maybe you haven't seen this, but its root system is probably going to be very special as well too to help it to basically uh, conserve water. So there's some cool adaptations here. First of all, these stems are vertical. They're also covered with a thick waxy cuticle. And we said spines instead of leaves. And there's something called cam physiology, which is a uh, particular type of photosynthesis that it's doing to help it to conserve water. So think about why, pause the video, think about why each one of these things would actually help it to save water before you move on. Okay, the vertical stems, they're helping to absorb sunlight early in the day. So as the sun rises, you get a lot of light coming in from the side. And as the sun sets, you get a lot of uh, light coming in from the side as well. And this, this is where the photosynthesis primarily takes place. I mean, the leaves are just spines. They're not really, really, they're not really doing that. But when the sun is directly above, that's when the temperatures are really, really hot. You're likely to lose a lot of water when the at, at midday noon, basically. So when you can think of when the sun is directly above, there's relatively little surface area that's exposed to the direct light here, and uh, it's going to help it to save a little bit of water. The thick waxy cuticle, that's just a, like a few extra layers of wax to prevent water from being lost. Uh, the top of leaves are also waxy in this way. The cam physiology uh, changes how and when the stomata actually open. So the stomata actually stay closed during the day. This is different from what we mentioned previously um, in regular plants where the presence of light actually opens the stomata. In this case, uh, the stomata actually open during the night for gas exchange and then minimize the amount of water that can be lost from heat and light there. And the spines instead of leaves are to reduce uh, the surface area for transpiration and also to discourage little guys like this from going and actually eating the plant and taking away all the water as well too. A few practice questions to end off the entire thing. So go ahead, uh, pause the video, take a look at this. Hopefully you've covered uh, some photosynthesis as well so you understand what's going on. Pause the video, take a look at this question and the answer is coming up right now. And one more question. Which hormone is involved in the closing of stomata? This should be fresh in your mind. It should, should be super easy. But uh, there are a few other hormones there. Auxin, gibberellin, endoleacetic 
acid. The correct answer for this is obviously abscisic acid. So that's everything you need to know about transpiration. So uh, go through and try to figure out how would you change this question to make each one of these uh, at least oxin and gibberellin. This is not one you really need to know for the IB biology syllabus, but definitely you need to know these two and you'll see those in some of the other videos. All right.